Some say history is a river that flows endlessly. I say that history is a series of stories written by each person's experiences. Welcome to Stories, a history of Appalachia, one story at a time. Hello, podcast listeners. Welcome into another episode of Stories. I'm Steve Gilley, along with Rod Mullins, and today we're going to tell you the story of the robbery of the Huntington Bank in Huntington, West Virginia. What's so special about that? Well, the robbery was apparently the work of the notorious James Gang, Jesse and Frank and their men of Wild West fame. That's right. This wasn't just any gang, but the notorious James Gang that we have all heard about from history. Now, whether or not this story is true, we don't really know for sure, but it was reported in a 1922 news report from a paper in the Huntington area that on September 6th, 1875, that Frank James and the James Gang of Outlaws held up the Bank of Huntington. Now, as you probably know, Jesse and Frank were Confederate guerrillas from Missouri, a divided border state much like Kentucky was. Now, after the war was over, the brothers, instead of returning to honest work, farming, or laboring, decided to turn their wartime training to crime and began to robbing banks, stagecoaches, trains, and the like. Now, eventually, the gang included fellow outlaws Cole Younger and his brothers John, Jim, and Bob, along with other former Confederate raiders. Now, as most bank robbers would do, they had their, what do they call it, Rod, modus operandi? Is that it? Sounds good to me there, Steve. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. They had well, their motives. Let's just put it that way. They had their way of doing things. Yes. Now, when this gang would rob a bank, most times they did so in broad daylight in the middle of the day. Now, they used well-armed men and made sure they had good, fast horses at the ready for a fast getaway. And that's how the Bank of Huntington was robbed. For you see, four men made their way into Huntington, West Virginia, to the bank on horseback. They were Frank James, Cole Younger, Tom McDaniel, and Tom Webb. Tom Webb, by the way, being a Confederate vet who'd fought at Lawrence, Kansas with the James brothers. Well, after tying the horses to the nearest hitching rack, which was across the street from the bank, Two of them stayed with the animals, while the other two ambled on into the bank itself. On this day, there was only one person inside the bank, a cashier by the name of Robert T. Oney. And since it was lunch, the bank president, John Russell, was, as most bank presidents do at lunchtime, they go out to lunch and leave the employees there. Right, Rod? Pretty much so, Steve. Well, once the two outlaws got inside the bank, they moved quickly. They jumped over the counter, grabbing up a pistol that Mr. Oney tried to grab. One of the gunmen pointed his own gun at Oney's head, demanding that he open the safe and turn over the bank's money on the threat of being killed. Now, once the safe was opened, the two gunmen scooped up the $20,000 inside. They then asked Robert Oney if he had any money deposited in the bank, to which he replied, a checking account with $1 in it. Now, remember... This was 1875, and a dollar sure went a lot farther back then than it does now. And at that, they tossed him a dollar, took off, jumping on the horses outside, and all four galloping away. Well, it was at just that time that our intrepid bank president returned from lunch and just happened to see the men run out of the bank with all that money. Mr. Russell rushed inside, grabbed his shotgun, and took off after them with his horse, after gathering up a posse, of course, consisting of Cabell County Sheriff D.J. Smith and 20 other men. Well, the outlaws made their way out of Huntington through Wayne, then Trout's Hill, where they actually stopped for a spell rod, and according to the newspaper article, the Jesse James gang ate, quote, dinner with Aunt Lizzie Christian in the old house, which formerly stood on the northwest corner of Frizzell Square. Well, while they were there, they talked with the citizens, but not until the next day did the people of the town discover that they had entertained the noted Jesse James crew that, well, were in those days well-known in the Yellowback novels. Yeah, we we need to explain those Yellowback novels. Those were the sort of like what we would refer to as those uh, crime novels, I guess, mm-hmm. or those little fun kind of things that they talked about back then of adventure and so forth. Yep, pulp novels, or I think they call them dime novels, novels yeah. too. That, yeah, 
that would be it. So sort of like the thing of true detective, like you would see back in the seventies and so yes. forth. People would pick up off the uh, there off the rack if they go into a convenience store. But after leaving Wayne, the men went across the Big Sandy River into Kentucky before the posse got to them. It was at this point that the law gave up and headed back into Huntington empty-handed. Now, at this point, according to the article, two of the men, Frank James and Cole Younger, split with the other two and headed north, while McDaniel and Webb headed south into Middle Tennessee. Now, by now, the word had gotten out to the law enforcement in Kentucky, and McDaniel and Webb were found, and a gunfight took place in which one of the robbers, Tom McDaniel, was fatally wounded. Some stories actually say that McDaniel was actually wounded by a couple of Kentucky farmers, but the remaining man managed to escape and make his way down into Tennessee, where he was captured with $4,500 on him. Now, cashier Robert Oney identified both men, the first before he died of his wounds, but the dying man refused to say who he was, and the other man gave his alias as Jack Keene. That man later pled guilty to the robbery and was sentenced to 14 years in state prison and was paroled in 1883. Then he promptly disappeared. And as you all are probably aware, Jesse James met his end at the end of a gun fired by Bob Ford, one of the gang members, so that Mr. Ford could collect the reward money that was offered for James' death or capture. And Jesse was hanging a picture on the wall at the time when Ford shot him in the back of his head. Now, Rod, whether all this is true is anybody's guess, but the folks around Huntington certainly thought so, as there were legends of Frank James hiding in Wayne County for years on a farm. Some folks even thought that U.S. Senator from West Virginia, Stephen B. Elkins, was Jesse James himself. Can you believe that? Oh, my gosh. That's unreal. (laughs) Now, an interesting side note to that rumor is this. Mr. Elkins... And it's actually true. Mr. Elkins taught Cole Younger in school, and they were friends during the Civil War. So there was a little bit of a connection there between the senator and at least one of the members of the gang, Cole Younger. Wow. Irony can be pretty ironic sometimes, can't it? It can. Do you think this really (laughs) happened? I don't know. You know, the way things are, especially in Appalachia and these stories, anything is, you know, not hard to believe. Okay. Well, at least they certainly thought that 30 or 40 years afterwards in that newspaper article, and uh, that is the rumor that was going around Huntington for many years. So we'll just uh, we'll just say this is a 50% history story today. How about that? Yeah, we'll just treat it as a 50% legend story is what we'll <laughs> treat it as. So. And that story is the story of the robbery of the Bank of Huntington by the James Gang on September 7th, 1875. Another story that makes up the history of this place we call Appalachia. Thanks for listening. You can subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, Google Play, or on your favorite podcast app. We're on Facebook at Stories of Appalachia and on Twitter at Story Appalachia. Till next time, take care. So long, everybody.